organization of your life so that you're not overwhelmed. Sometimes people go into a, a health journey and they don't organize the rest of their life around it. And then they get overwhelmed and they just quit. But when you plan and you have those alarms and notifications, it better helps to keep everything in balance and you're more likely to continue. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Light of My Soul podcast. I'm your host, Andre Looney. And today we have a very important topic uh, that we're going to discuss, uh, fitness and health. Uh, today I have a good friend of mine who's going to really help inform and ed educate all of us and you viewers out there on the importance of fitness and health. I would like to introduce my friend, certified fitness coach, business owner and author, UK, J, E. Kong, tell the viewers a little bit about yourself. Well, first and foremost, Dre, thanks, thanks for having me, man. I greatly appreciate it. I'm honored. Um, so my name is uh, UK, J, E. Kong, or Coach E. Kong. I'm a business owner of the company Life Change, Inc. Uh, we started in 2009. It's basically been a, a holistic uh, company as far as health, uh, where we uh, not only help improve people's physical health, but also mental health is something that we've uh, delved into here recently. And so I'm just uh, happy to be here, happy to kind of give uh, uh, my knowledge uh, on this podcast to anyone who's uh, kind of looking to start the new year on the right foot. So uh, again, I appreciate appreciate you having me. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, also, uh, so I definitely am glad you're here, and uh, I got a few questions I want to ask you so that we can again inform and educate our viewers. Uh, so let's get right into it. All right. Let's All start. right. So the first question is, what advice would you give ex athletes or those who have stopped working out on getting back? into the gym got you ex-athletes getting back in the gym uh so the first thing i think uh we all should do ex-athletes or not um is going to be what i call a self-evaluation list right and so that's going to be 10 bullet points of um items that you want to really look at to really get mentally focused on, on the task at hand uh, the first five things you want to write down on your list is going to be the reasons why you have not decided to work out so uh, the first five things will be, I have chosen not to work out because I've been too busy. I've chosen not to work out because um, uh, I'm not motivated. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm in a place where I just can't find the motivation. After those five that you've listed, you want to list another five of reasons why you will be committed to going. I'll be committed to going because I want to play with my kids without running out of breath. Mm -hmm. I'm committed to going to the gym because... I'm tired of this beer belly. I want to look good for confidence. Uh, the great thing about your self-evaluation list is it's going to have two, two key um, values to your process. The first thing is uh, the, the bird's eye view of the list is going to create the motivation to go because ultimately your pros should outweigh your cons. The reasons to go should greatly outweigh the reasons why you're not going. So that's the first thing. The second thing is when you look at that, that list is actually going to play a part in your future days when you're not feeling it. When you're when you're when you're kind of lacking that motivation, this is going to be a good point of reference to say, "Hey, these are the things that I wrote down to start, and I can use these again." Right. So that'll be great. Uh, the next thing you want to do from that point, we're assuming from that point, as an ex athlete or someone who you know is 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 back into the environment of the gym, you want to then look at because Andre, you you know. Um, as well as I do, a athletes in general, we have that perfectionist uh, mentality. We want to do everything right and perfect. And so when you enter back into that environment, you're likely going to try to go an hour, lift heavy, and try to do the things that you used to do. That's the quickest way to get injured. And so one of the biggest things that I I, I say that, you know, going back in the gym and, and the phrase that I use is start ugly. That means lightweight. That means, you know, 20, 30 minutes, get in and get out and just get your body acclimated to the process of working out again. It's not going to be something that is going to be easy mentally because a part of your um, your drive and determination, that that's part of what makes athletes really great. And so you're going to have to really control that and really make sure that you give your body at least two or three weeks of consistent, small, incremental workouts and just allow your body to get back to the flow of things. And then from that point, say about after three weeks, you should be good to go. You should be able to kind of 
push it, you know, a little bit further each time. And then lastly, um, the last thing I would say is in that process, um, you always want to track your progress. The best way to track it um, is possibly through an app, a free app that, that's out here um, that you can get through the app store is called Strong. The Strong app is great because not only does it have um, charts where you can track your data, um, but it's for the iOS and Android. And it actually provides you with uh, good, you know, color schemes and things that you can, as an athlete, really identify, you know, where the areas that you're, you're need improvement and the areas that you're actually doing well in. So those would be things that I think that would be a great way to roll out. <laughs> That's good. I, I hope you guys are taking notes. Okay. Um, all right. So the second question is, what are the best ways to rebuild the habit of working out? That's great. So to rebuild the habit of working out, um, the, the, pay attention to words. I think I think a lot of times we just over, gloss over things. So there's building and there's rebuilding. Mm -hmm. The problem with people building is that's starting. A lot of people don't start. The benefit of rebuilding is that you've done it before. You just got to go back to it, right? You just have to you just have to go back and rediscover what was valuable back then. So I always tell people, if you're rebuilding, all you're doing is rediscovering what actually got you interested in the first place, right? And so go back, think, okay, what actually initiated my enjoyment of that, you know? And so find out your what and find out your how, find out your why, find out those things in the beginning that really got you interested. Once you do that, you then can can actually figure out the value of what you're actually doing. But I always say, once you uh, once you rediscover, you have to reapply. Reapply meaning go back into that movement before you actually judge it, go back into it. Uh, a good example is I had a client who um, they started on a journey and they stopped, but they forgot that the reason that they stopped was they were having pain in their knee. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, there was squats that they were doing and there was pain in their knee. Now, that was the reason that they stopped working out, but they were doing great while they were actually training. And so the benefit of reapplying yourself is sometimes that time in between you mature and your perspective is better. And also your body's probably healed in areas that maybe it wasn't healed before. So reapplying actually can give you an opportunity to do those same squats again but now you don't have the pain. Now you can actually figure out your body's changing and, and, and actually go through and possibly continue this as a lifestyle now because um, the timing just wasn't right. That was the only real obstacle. It wasn't that you couldn't do it. The timing wasn't right. And then your joints uh, were, were, were providing a little bit of a, a obstacle. And so I say, rediscover the value and then reapply, put yourself back in that environment and allow yourself to, uh, to, to kind of rediscover it in a different way. And nine times out of 10, you probably have more value. Uh, another thing, I, I, as far as me being a, a husband um, and a, a father of a two-year-old, so when I was 21, you know, I, I had always known what naps were. Naps were something that I, I had, you know, familiarity with, um, but, at you know the naps that I have at forty with a wife and, and a two year old are exponentially greater in value than they were at twenty one when I was a bachelor, and so being able to rediscover the the routine of naps at this age, I would never know at twenty one it it would be this valuable because I had to reapply myself. I had to go back and say, okay, these are things that are going to help my function out my functionality and my motor skills in a different way than it used to. So I say all that to say, basically, don't negate the fact that going back to rediscover and reapply yourself in the, in something that you may have stopped, don't negate the fact that you'll have the same feeling. Your perspective may be different. That time may, may mature you more and you actually may have a better result. Hmm. This is getting deep. <laughs> this is getting deep. I like it. All right, so number three, uh, can you share some tactics or methods to help you keep stay on track? Sure. So I got four tactics and you guys want to write this down. The first one is you got to have a why. You got to have a why. A why is just a purpose for why you're doing what you're doing. Um, so without that, there's, there's not even a reason to start if you don't have a purpose, because otherwise you're going to quit. Um, after you have a why, you want to move next to accountability. Um, you can have an accountability partner. You can hire on a professional like myself, a coach or a personal trainer. But you can also just go through your contact list through your phone find you a reliable friend, you know, or unreliable, you know, whatever, you know, someone who is, uh, who's going to be able to light that fire under you and, and kind of remind you of what you said you were going to do. So accountability partner is, is huge. 
Um, so you got your why, you got your accountability partner. The third thing is visuals. Visuals are something that because we're, we're all different types of learners, visuals help those people who just need to kind of be in front of things on a constant basis for them to really absorb um, the purpose. And so visuals for me um, are, are valuable because uh, I think that the the ability to see uh, see something over and over, your subconscious starts to pick it up in a different way that you would if you were just telling yourself, hey, you know, this is it. So I say visuals are good. There was a show, um, there's a show on BET and it was called um, Being Being Mary Jane. Starred Gabrielle Union, uh, Dwayne Wade's wife. And um, the, the, the show itself was, uh, it was depicting a, uh, it was a successful TV host who moved to Atlanta and she actually was balancing her business, being a successful, like a TV host, family and relationships. And there was this one thing that, that used to stick out in my mind. It was so it was so poignant because uh, she was doing her morning routine. And again, you have to keep in mind that th this is a high level thinker. This is someone who's, you know, depended on, you know, high level thinker, uh, successful person. She's doing a morning routine. She goes to the bathroom and she's starting to do her, 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 her bathroom routine with, you know, washing her face and doing everything. And the camera pans to her mirror and she has post-it notes on her actual mirror. Bright, colorful post-it notes, orange, uh, yellow, uh, light, neon green, and they had messages on it. And I just thought it was a great illustration to just remind us that in the morning when your brain is the most receptive, if you don't have those positive things in front of you, like we have to assume that she's successful in what she's doing, but you also know that if she's doing something like that, that if you aren't doing it, you're likely behind the eight ball. You're likely not giving yourself a great opportunity to be successful. And so I just thought it was a great depiction of visuals and just knowing in the morning, especially when, you're, when your mind is most receptive to, you know, the energy that you give it. Maybe picking up the phone isn't the best thing. Maybe getting on social media in the morning isn't the, the, the best thing. Maybe getting into prayer meditation, maybe finding um, positive messages. Maybe that's going to be great um, to kind of, you know, pull back the curtain on my own personal uh, routine. Um, so I have an office uh, and in my business office room, I have a whiteboard. My whiteboard has an affirmation. I read it twice a day. The affirmation attains my financial goal. It says how long I want to, um, before I reach that goal at a specific time, it has a specific task that I want to execute on in order to actually attain the goal. And then actually has a, uh, um, um, actually has the disciplines of what I need to do for my family in addition to balancing this. And I read it twice a day, in the morning and the night. And I'll be honest, the impact that it's had for me has been substantial. And so I just uh, I just say visuals are, are a great part. So, but that's number three. The last one is alarms. Mm -hmm. Alarms, notifications, those things are great because as you know, Dre, as a father, as a husband, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of responsibility. And if you don't have someone almost like a, 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 I say a technical secretary or IT secretary in your hand to kind of, you know, ping every now and then to kind of remind you, hey, you know, today, you know, electric bills coming out or, hey, you know, um, you know, meeting meeting at seven, those things are, are extremely important, um, not only to show uh, your consistency, but also to show the organization of your life so that you're not overwhelmed. Sometimes people go into a, a health journey and they don't organize the rest of their life around it. And then they get overwhelmed and they just quit. But when you plan and you have those alarms and notifications, it better helps to keep everything in balance and you're more likely to continue. That advice is going to help for a lot of other things. <laughs> I appreciate it. For sure. All right. Uh, number four, is it all grit? Or is there a secret to maintaining that consistency? Right. That's good. Um, so grit is always a part of maintaining consistency in my, in my opinion. Um, but I think for me, the easiest way to maintain consistency is to attach a positive emotion to an unfavorable task. Let me say that again. Attach a positive emotion to an unfavorable task. Right. And so I love music. I, I'm a I'm a advocate of, of 90s R and B, 2000 R and B. And one of the things that I do to treat myself is I create you know playlists for um, myself. And so I have playlists specific to, for the gym. And so what I would tell anyone to do that that's in my position that enjoys music is create a playlist 
um, specific to the gym, something that you can only listen to while you're either in the gym, on the way to the gym, or leaving the gym. And then this way, when you think about working out, you know what you think about? Think about 112. I got to listen to 112. I think <laughs> think about Avant. Think about oh, or whatever you know, or if you know hype. If you want, you know, some some Gucci or whatever you know, whatever gets you, you know, hype. Um, you think about that, and that attachment to that positive emotion kind of makes working out better. It kind of gives you a, a, a different idea of what you're going into because now you know. Okay, I get get to this to my playlist. So that'd be one. Uh, another thing you could do is um, if you, you know, if you like to shop, if you like, you know, style, styling yourself, um, get a, a few things uh, on sale, apparel, some workout gear. New workout gear is a great way to improve your, your mind state, get your energy. Um, and I know that, you know, just, you know, some people go to the point where it, it's like the first day of school, like, hey, Monday gets to work out. They lay their, their apparel on the bed, you know, and they're ready to go. So just kind of look at, you know, things like that to kind of trigger the mind in a positive way to say, Hey, I, 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 I don't necessarily love to go to the gym, but man, I can't wait to wear my Nike, my Nike outfit or, or, you know, whatever to the gym. And then I think the third thing for, you know, to maintain that consistency, um, is, is, so <laughs> here's the thing there, there's, there's a, a fitness workout called CrossFit CrossFit. Um, I don't know if it's as popular now, but it's, it was at one point it was extremely popular. But if anyone knows about CrossFit, CrossFit, you're talking about burpees, box jumping. I mean, the gamut of kettlebells, ball slams, you're talking about just like a whole gamut of things. But you have like 70, 80 year old people doing it. You know why? Because of community. People love community. Community helps people feel um, love, feel, feel connected to something. And so I would encourage you if you're if you're struggling at all with um with consistency that community is just a great opportunity to to kind of motivate you because now you, someone's depending on you sometimes really good people will sometimes will get out of bed at, at the crack of dawn because they want to help someone someone's in need you know because they just have a heart for people mm -hmm. and so if you have community you know people are depending on you man it, it'll you'll be surprised it'll get get some people out of the bed and be like i, I don't want to go but man i know tom's gonna be yeah or man i know betty i told betty hey i'll see you next week i gotta be there community is big and if you if you are struggling with community go on facebook running groups there's fitness groups there's all type of groups now so you you'll always find an opportunity for community but i say community is a great a great thing that you can look into to uh get yourself and on the on the subject of that i just want to say one of my other keys is create obstacles for success put things in the way that will create a funnel of success. One of my clients, um, or I have, I have, so I, I train primarily business professionals. One of the things business professionals run into is black tie events and weddings, things in general that just come up where they're nervous that they're going to get off a meal plan. They're going to get off track. And so I always tell them to create an obstacle that'll grant you the success one of the big things is going to be your eating right so you know what you do before you go to that black tie event fill up on chicken salad fill up on whole foods and vegetables get yourself to the point where when you get into that environment you're mentally you're not hungry so your decision making is better mm -hmm. you're you're not in a position where if, if you're uh, smelling something you like it's, it's going to be different when you're full you ever had yeah, you, I, I know. <laughs> yeah you, you ever smell something when you're, you're full when you're hungry, McDonald's smells the two different ways. You're like, oh my God, you all gonna cover your nose? Like, I, I'm I'm full. I'm not I'm not feeling it. So, so the, the the value of of putting obstacles in your way for success means creating uh creating the priority to where you're proactively choosing to either um, make the decision or not. And by the way, if you have a healthy option, um, then you can always you know, get something else that, you know, that that's less healthy, but it just helps um, remove those, um, those regretful decisions that some people make in the spur of the moment. And I'm glad you uh, touched on food a little bit, because I, I, I was, I was waiting for that to come in, because I know food plays a, a major part. And you're right, when you're full, the food smells a, a lot different, especially McDonald's. <laughs> uh, now, this one's a little, a little personal for a, a lot of people, including myself. So this question, how do you get back into the gym after a, a hiatus, uh, a year or longer? 
Right. Being out a year longer. Being out a year longer. Okay. So human beings are bipedal. Okay. So Not bipolar. <laughs> Bipedal, okay. bipedal, right? Yeah. I don't get canceled either. I don't don't cancel me. Humans are bipedal, um, and, and let's break down the root word. Bi, two, mm-hmm. pedal. The root word in pedal is is p e d. That's foot, right? Our Creator allow allowed for us to be upright in our position for the most part, and he he allowed us to our movement to be with our legs and feet. And so walking is one of the easiest mm. and most natural movements that we can do as human beings. Let me, let me tell you something. The, um, the, the young mother with the, the child that's crawling, she'll be happy that the child is crawling, but you know, what we'll get on that, that family chat, that video that'll get on the family chat. Oh, Baby Jasmine took her first steps. Did it? She got to put it on Facebook. She about so walking is so valuable to us, even to the point where um, it's an uh, Olympic event. We got like power walking. Power walking is, is is an Olympic event. Dre, if if you were to walk down to this door, look out the window, and come back and put it on Facebook, how, you know how many views it'll get? <laughs> maybe three, and then maybe just people, <laughs> me, you, and the camera, the camera woman over here. Okay. Let a black bear get on his hind legs, temporarily walk down, look out the window, come, it's going viral, you know? And so, because we, we distinctively have been designed to where that's our natural state. And so any animal or mammal that, or insect that can get on temporarily on two feet, you know, it's a big thing, but we tend to forget like, this is something great. So if you've had a long hiatus, I would say, um, start with walking, just start walking. That's one of the most natural things you can do, low impact. So it's easy on the joints. Um, and then um, from that point, I would say, go f- from walking into uh, looking at a video. YouTube, of course, is, is one of the highest reaching uh, social media platforms that we have. A YouTube video is going to give you the uh, the opportunity and the control to not only uh, work out, but pause when you need to, take a breath, you know, and, and kind of get interactive. And progressively, as you, you've done the walking, maybe you've done the video, I would say step back into the gym environment, but do it this way. When you go back into the gym or a, a, um, a gym environment, Go into a class. A lot of gyms will offer a beginner's class or aerobics class that's strictly for people that are learning. Use that as a a good um, bridge to get you back in. So if you've been on a long hiatus, go through that progression of steps and then let the the last thing be just to sign up one of these classes. And by the way, there's a lot of great classes. Um, You you can do pole, pole dancing classes if you know some ladies that like that. You could do the no because they do have like the fitness pole classes. They they have um like the boxing classes you can do, um hula hoop, like they have a, a tremendous amount of variety when it comes to that. But yeah, uh, if you've been on a hiatus and you 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 know you start with the walking, walking gets a little, you know, tedious, move to the videos um in in house, do some of those videos online. And then the next thing I say to do, go in, sign for one of these beginner classes, let someone give you a guided workout. And I think that that's uh, a substantial way to kind of build yourself the confidence and to get back, you know, to where you need to be. Wow. This is good. This is really good information. Uh, very informative, a lot of education around uh, health and fitness. Uh, I, I definitely appreciate uh, your wisdom, your knowledge, and you bring it into the light of my soul podcast platform. Um, give, give me, give us some, some last words, just, What's on your heart? Last thing you want to say as far as fitness and health uh, to take us home? Well, um, again, just thank you so much for the opportunity. Um, this is just a great, uh, great um, platform to kind of share, you know, for people. I, I honestly know that there are a lot of people who are discouraged because they, they haven't had a, a lot of opportunities to kind of understand, you know, you get inundated with so much fitness information you don't know right from left hey you know i'm supposed to be eating this or this and they say you know uh, coffee's bad or but i have coffee every morning but they say it's good so there's a lot of information the only thing i would tell people is um number one listen to your body your body's going to be the best uh catalyst of the decision making that you want to do uh number two um look at well learned um 
professionals and specialists, I would say, uh, people that you can actually go back years, you know, upon and kind of research, you know, because honestly, the, the fitness in industry is saturated, but you can really filter out um, the people that have been doing it for a long time if you just do your research. And so I say lean on to your, um, the way you feel, um, how you how you know, your, your own personal body, listen to your body, seek out high level professionals. And the third thing is make it fun. Um, I don't think that, that we say that enough as, as, as fitness professionals is it's a lot of opportunities to just like enjoy the euphoric feeling of just burning calories and, and, you know, continuing to push yourself, continue to get better in, in, in areas that you, you may not have. I mean, one of the, one of the best things that I, in my profession that I, I love is to start with someone, have them tell me everything that they can't do, and then push to the point where they actually can visually see that their body, the version that they started with is, is a totally different version that we transformed all of their restrictions, all of their boundaries into access. Mm. You know, they're like, coach, I can, you know, I'm off of my medication. Um, coach, they told me that uh, my blood pressure is the lowest. Coach, I didn't know my, I, have, I had all these problems in my family tree. I thought I would just have to deal with it. Like my doctor saying I'm the first one in the family. to. So it just, it, it's almost like a veil that can be lifted off. So I just encourage people, take it slow, listen to your body, seek out um, well-known professionals, people that you can research. And then lastly, just have fun and understand that your only restriction really is going to be um, the the lack of um, the, the information that you tell yourself. So, yeah. Well, again, man, I appreciate it, brother. Thank you for your, your knowledge, your wisdom, your expertise. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining the Light of My Soul podcast. Don't forget to join us on YouTube. Check us out, Anchor and Spotify. Um, a new year, yeah. a new you. you. I yes, like sir. that. A new year, a, a new, new you. you, a new you. A new right. year, a new year. year. Let's a say it together. A, a new, new year, a new, new you. Health and fitness with certified fitness, fitness coach, coach and author and author. You business can. owner, a business owner. There you go. <laughs> and my friend and my brother in Christ. Yes, sir. All right. We appreciate you. Thanks for joining the Light of My Soul podcast. We'll see you soon.